Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just clarification, but since we had started yesterday with the word of the Lord, I want to leave to my brother, Ekomas Mute Mutuse, through you. In Proverbs 12, verses 22, the Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in those who is telling the truth. So, Mweshmua Mutuse, Ekomas, I leave you with that. My quick clarification, Chair, with your indulgence, one, by the time you are giving us that the wealth of the deputy president was 5.2 billion Kenyan shillings that you allege has been acquired for the last two years, did you access the wealth declaration from, from EACC, number one? Number two, under the NCIC Act and in Mudama's case that the courts ruled, is shareholding part of the definition of the word incitement? Number three, in the matter of Kilifi Malindi Road, do you have any evidence to prove whether it is a private or a public road? And if it is either private or public, can you table the evidence or before the house? Number four, clarification on the issue of Justice Esther Maina. What is are you telling us that since the deputy president is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, does he, does he, he, does he not have a, a, a right as a citizen of Kenya not to bring any complaint against any officer, including judicial uh, officers? Finally, on the update in quickly, on 1st October 10, 2024, Cabinet Secretary Mutua. Uh, Senator Kenyua. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. My question goes to Honorable Mutuse. Uh, Honorable Mutuse, was Street Top Hotel, Street Top Hotel, uh, was it available for acquisition? And was and if that is so. Was there any law of procurement that was breached? Second one, what is the age of these DP's sons? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Fatuma Dule. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question first goes to uh, the council on the side of the deputy president. My question is on... Uh, attack on the national security. And knowing that uh, national intelligence, Mr. Speaker, is a critical organ of a government. And uh, the attack by the deputy president is a very serious one. And I've seen the video being played that uh, what the current president said when he was the deputy president is equal. And I heard also deputy president saying uh, I have learned from my boss. Does that answer the question of mis gross misconduct on the part of attack on the security? Number two, the issue of this inheriting the widow. We've been told a lot of stories here, but I really want to know, because we are Africans, matters of widows are very critical. Have you thought of looking for the family of the late... Uh, Gashagwa, just to clarify so many questions that are lingering around that particular family. I thank you. Senator Beatrice Akenye. If you're in the first round, honorable senators, allow, allow others also to get an opportunity to seek clarification. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, my Clarification is uh, to the DP's uh, team. On a video that was played yesterday at uh, a relocation point in Nairobi County, I wanted clarification from the DP's team on whether their client is aware that county governments are distinct governments and if so, Honorable Speaker, did the DP consult with the county government of Nairobi 
over the challenges of relocation uh, at Kayole. And two, honorable speaker, there was a video that was played, either one or two, uh, involving a, a speech at either rally by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya. My question is, what was the essence of that video? And is it to show that two wrongs would make one right? Thank you. Senator Lelegwe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My clarification is to the witness of the National Assembly. Yesterday, during the cross-examination, the advocate uh, of the Deputy President, you asserted that you have identified several companies which you have no issues and to which you do not attribute any misconduct in their dealings. Given this context, could you inform the necessity for including these companies in the present impeachment motion? Thank you. Senator Eddy. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, for the witness in chief and uh, one clarity question from the council for the deputy president and particularly uh, council uh, Tom Masharia. So I'll start with the uh, Honorable Mutusa. Honorable Mutusa, may you help this house understand whether they, all the companies that you indicated are uh, for the sons and the spouse of the deputy president and whether you established how old they are and estimated the, the net worth of those companies? Did you manage to estimate the net worth of those companies and how did you do that? To the senior council, the council Tom Masharia, in the exploration of ground number four, you led this house to look at uh, the particulars of the coalition document the coalition document and the coalition agreement. May you help us understand how we should interpret Article 91 of the Constitution and Article 232 of the Constitution with regards to your response on government being a company equal to having shares and not the country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Sek. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My also quest uh, the question also goes to Honorable Mutuse. Wanted to make a clarification on the issue of uh, Peterson Jomo, the advert, uh, uh, Abidavid, on the Olive uh, Garden Hotel, on the appointment of Julian uh, Jahenda as the secondary agent and uh, the letter to the Public Service Commission through the clerk of the National Assembly uh, by volume 8, uh, 8A, page 1, gives a different person by the name Maka Juliana Jahenda. Why do we have different names here? You need to clarify because it has a different person altogether two different people altogether. Second clarification is on the issue of the award of the tender on the proposed refurbishment of the DP's residence in Karen. Honorable Mutuse, the government through the uh, State House controller signed that contract, wanted to know 
what is the relationship of this contract with the DP now that you're saying it has some issues why what what's all about the contract and the 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 the, the company that did that refurbishment we need to know what is the relationship and what is or how what is the malpractice that has Senator Amida Kibwan. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, sorry, my question was for Dr. Mulwa. Senator Wakili Sige. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've got two questions. One to the Council for the Deputy President, and the other one, actually both, uh, for clarification by the Council for the Deputy President. Um, yesterday, in the course of your cross-examination, you took us to page 410 of volume three. This is with regard to the accusation where His Excellency the Deputy President uh, divulged or accused the national intelligence uh, of uh, what you say. Now, my clarification from you, which I desire, is at that page 410, the evidence which you sought to juxtapose what the President did and what the Deputy President was accused of having done is with regards to one being in office and another one alleging that he's not been able to attend sessions where that complaint came from. Give us the correlation of the two. And secondly, I share the sentiments by all the senators who've sought to get from you an understanding about the coalition agreements. You attempted to explain yesterday the relationship between company shares and coalition agreement shares. You were asked about the place of this in terms of the regimes of the two kinds of agreements. What do you say as regards shares in a company registered under the Companies Act vis-a-vis post-election coalition agreements registered under the Political Parties Act and the governance of Senator Batuli Beti Montet. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to ask uh, Honorable Mutuse, uh, is there a minimum age of uh, a client in a bank to get a loan of 700 million? Senator S.C. Okenyuri. Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, my question, I'm awaiting Dr. Andrew Mulwa. Senator Chariot Aaron. Mike. Uh, two quick questions to uh, you, Mutusa. Is there any crime? that a Kenyan will have committed if they have 20, 30, or even 40 companies, because I see you have listed 22 companies here, is there any crime by just owning uh, these companies you feel that the person you accuse has committed? Second, on this issue of uh, Vipingo Beach, surely, uh, Honorable Mutuse, what is the crime of the sons of the deputy president being listed as directors because I have tried combing through your motion to establish what you consider to be either an illegality or a crime on their part by simply being listed as directors. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, is to the counsel for the DP, um, uh, Wakili Masharia. The clips of the then DP Ruto played by your team, could we read it to mean that it's an admission on your part that you're saying 
if it was done then by a sitting deputy president, please allow the current one to commit the same uh, at this uh, point. And lastly, the 30% allocation to Ford Kenya uh, in the coalition agreement in ANC, how has it been realized? Senator Margaret Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. I have one small question for Honorable Mluse, and that is on the witness, uh, uh, somebody who, by the name Peterson Njomo Mushira, who wrote an, an affidavit, also an affidavit that touches on Olive Garden Hotel. He, has, he offered himself to appear and, pre and be cross-examined on the content of his affidavit. Was he invited? Senator Kathuri Murungi. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, mine are just very strict uh, clarifications. Uh, number one goes to Honorable Mutuse. Honorable Mutuse, in uh, ground seven, you have seen that uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, has inexplicably amassed a humongous, you know, these are very strong ones, property portfolio estimated at 5.2 billion. So my question is, uh, uh, this is within two years. I know for a fact that before an election, any eligible candidate clears himself or herself with the IBC before contesting. Therefore, for comparative analysis, do you have His Excellency, the Deputy President's uh, uh, property or worth during the 2022, before the 2022 elections, so that now we can be able, as a jury, can be able to compare and see whether for two years for sure has been able to amass this wealth. Number two, there is this property in Meru. Uh, many Meru uh, guys have called me to the last night asking me whether there is evidence to show that this land is in, uh, in Meru. The last one is with, to the councils of the deputy president. Uh, there was a clip which was played here yesterday when the deputy president made a press conference in Mombasa. Immediately after the president did this in Nairobi, two different cities. Therefore, I did not get clarity from the councils about this, uh, the, the question or the clip. So I was really requesting that one of them could be able to expound on that co controversy between the two pressers in two different cities by the two, the principal and the deputy principal of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you. Senator Okoit Omtata. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I have a uh, question for the Honorable Mutuse. Uh, to, whose, to whom does this motion belong? Because in most of your answers, you keep on saying we. I think, Honorable Senator Omtata, that question was uh, asked by the Honorable Enokwamboa, Senator. And okay. it was responded to. So just uh, ask for a different uh, clarification. Okay, and uh, other than that, I wanted to ask whether Honorable Mutuze knows the difference between an impeachment motion and a censor motion. And if he does, where does he place his motion? Is it a censor motion or is it an impeachment motion? And what are the thresholds? for each of those two motions, if you understand the difference. Thank you. Senator Chute. Senator Mwishimwa Speaker, Mwishimwa Mutuse, unileta ushaidi hapa mbele ya Senate, ukidai ya kuwa, 
Deputy President, I'm going to 5.2 billion. We're in Wakili. Na bila unawangea jana, unawanekana wakili kwa wakili shupavu. Ulileta ushaidi gani hapa? Ya kuonyesha valuation ya hii property, ya hiyo, ya hiyo. Katika documents yako, kuonyesha imifika 5.2 billion. Swali ya pili. Ulileta mashtaka kumi na moja. Bila unasimama huko leo. Unaona ibu kidogo kwa mba ulilete porojo mingi na mambo mingi kama ukiwa wakili ujafikiria bizuri. Sabu watu ya marsa beto nanuliza hiyo mutu kweli ni wakili ama ni mutu wa mekombolewa kutoka huko. Ebu jibu ya swali tifatali. Senator Beth Siengo. Now, honorable senators, we are going to conduct ourselves in decorum. We are not in any way going to demean the witnesses. Ask your question, but stick to the rules of this house. Senator Beth Siengo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this chance. I have two questions. One for um, Honorable Mutuse. Uh, in your presentation, I heard that um, you touched on the in inheritance and property of the late Neritu Gachagua. Have you reached out? to the widow and the children of the late Gachagua to also give you facts. The next question is uh, to the counsel for the DP. Yesterday you played a clip of the president speaking in Muranga. What was the purpose of playing that clip? And how does it relate to the saying popularly now used by Kenyans? Kufa Dereva, Kufa Makanga. Thank you. Senator Chimera. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question goes to the counsel for the DP. On the, I would wish to seek clarity on the documents that they tabled uh, yesterday being the coalition agreement, which basically informed uh, the basis as to which the DP has been talking about chairs. I just want to know whether there is any document that secures shares in respect of the region where the DP comes from. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, if the council is aware that his client, at the time those documents were being prepared, he was a candidate for office, and now he successfully became DP, and that he needs to promote national unity, and if it is still in order for him to continue championing for the interest of one region as against the entire nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Richard Onyong. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My questions are two, and I would like to ask uh, Honorable Mutuse. I hold you highly. I don't think that you're as idiotic as my co our colleagues will say. I want to ask you, between the time when the deputy president was a member of parliament and the time when he became the deputy president, were you able to see whether there was a deliberate uh, variation in the amounts of money that he was handling? Did you see whether the money that he was handling as a member of parliament, for example, uh, changed then to the money that you brought in where you are saying that there is some money laundering taking place. Uh, were you able or are you able to show that distinction in order for you to make your case? The second question I wanted to ask you again on the same, same issue. When you are trying to find out whether there is money laundering on any transaction, and I know chances are you did not have the technical expertise and maybe an investigative agency to help you. But did you, by any chance, find out money moving from anywhere, either through His Excellency the Deputy President's private accounts or any money that was being borrowed? Because I know that one property you've mentioned that it was a loan. But all these other properties that you allege that the Deputy President had purchased, did you link that from money coming from some place or money coming from some illicit, like you say, because I don't see that evidence uh, on the table. 
And finally, I want to ask you again, uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, if you look at the issue of the will of Mr. Gachagua, uh, that is the former governor, did you by any chance get a, 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 a way to ask either through the wife, the children, whether those are meetings that took place where they were involved or whether they were unhappy or happy with the transactions which were taking place because there isn't any evidence whatsoever of, for example, the wife complaining or the children complaining. Did you get anything like that which is substantive? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Mutenda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My two questions goes to you, Ms. Uh, Honorable Mutuse. First, in regards to this company by the name Crystal Kenya Limited, Ground 7, date in, of incorporation is, in, is 2009. And the CR12 that you have submitted to this house is for this year. Would you tell this house who was the initial director of this company? If that was so, was there any change of directorship of this company? Secondly, the one on trial is the deputy president of this country and not his two sons. You have linked Crystal to be a proxy for the deputy pre president through his two sons. Would you tell this house if you have any evidence that shows that money was wired from Crystal Limited to the account or to any company linked to the deputy president? Senator Shaquille Abdallah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to Honorable Mutusi, Mutusi uh, if uh, Judge Maina had, had filed any complaints regarding the being harassed by the Deputy President. Thank you. Senator Miraj Abdullah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question goes to Mr. Muluse. Mutuse, sorry. Is it your opinion that the DP was talking about enforcing the Kenya Kwanza coalition agreement when he was speaking about the shareholding issue? And the second one goes to the DP side that uh, we were reminded here of the oath we took when we assumed this institution. Is it in your place to say that your client has uh, breached his own oath even before we make a conclusion? Because we were made to read uh, the third schedule here on justice and, uh, directly and, and indirectly revealing such matters and the oath of secrecy that His Excellency the Deputy President took. In, 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 his, uh, in his utterances, he used to speak about not the Mlima being touched. So in the, in the essence of uh, national unity, don't you think that your client, the DP, or you clarify for us that he has already breached his own oath even before we make a decision as the jury of this house? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kisang. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My question, my first question is, goes to Mituse and a comment. Honorable Speaker, I want to find out from uh, Mushmiwa, out of the 22 companies that uh, you've alleged associated with the Deputy President, how many are really of interest to this particular impeachment. Yesterday you talked about the one in uh, Rea Vivingo, uh, and we saw that 10,000 of the shares, the total shares are owned by the estate of the late uh, Governor Kachakwa. Then uh, a comment, Honorable Speaker, is uh, the clips that were played yesterday 
on uh, shareholding. I think I want to ask the legal counsel for the deputy president. It looks like we didn't stop campaigns after election. It looked like we continued uh, to propagate campaigns because we expected the deputy president immediately after campaigns, we stop about this thing of shareholding because Senator Maanzo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this would have gone to Governor Orengo, but since he said uh, the clients, uh, the National Assembly had given him instructions, I would like them to tell me what is the relevance of the verse they read yesterday, and also on the floor of the National Assembly, they read a verse that when bad leaders rule, badness increases in a country, and when good leaders rule, goodness increases in a country. Finally, what is the maximum number of companies can an individual participate in under the law? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Mutuse, you may now proceed to respond. You have exactly 10 minutes to do that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and honorable senators for this opportunity. I have, from the questions that have come across, there are many that relate to the companies, and with your intelligence, allow me to start from there. Senator Cheriot, Senator from Marraquet, and several senators have asked why I listed 21 com companies and why I said I did not have an interest in some of them. Number one, I think it is important for us to understand the context within which we are operating. I am not an investigator. And the law under Article 94, Article 95, does not make a member of parliament, the National Assembly or Senate, an investigator. What I'm required to do is to establish a prima facie case, to establish that what is happening is outside the requirements